What I have here is the Denon DJ Prime 4, a revolutionary standalone controller with Wi-Fi streaming, massive storage capabilities, an awesome screen, no need for a laptop, all that stuff. You know all about this. But what I have here on the table does pretty much all of that, and it's about a sixth of the size. And I don't know what to make of this quite yet. I really don't know what to make of this. There's nothing else like this out there. And when I just said it does nearly everything that does, it does. It's got the same software running on it. It's got the same screen. It's got the same standalone. It's got the same Wi-Fi. It's got the same streaming built in. It's got the same two bike channels. It's got the same balanced and unbalanced outputs. All the stuff that a professional DJ would want is built into this tiny little box. And it's got a battery in it, so you don't even need power. What do you make of this? Well, let's talk about it for the next few minutes and then please let us know underneath who you think it's for, what you make of it, whether you love it. There's a lot of heart and head stuff going on with a, such a cute little DJ system such as the new Prime Go and it's quite unique. So if you enjoy this and if you want to be part of these discussions in the future, please do like and share this video. But now, well, let's take a closer look at the unit. So it's quite deep, but very small as you can see. And it's been designed to have this nice big screen in the middle, multi-gesture, touch, the same software that runs on all the other Prime series units, all the way up to actually the separates in the Pro DJ booth, which is, you know, it's, it's quite incredible really. It's got quite small jog wheels, which the Denon DJ guys tell me is because they've had to squash so much in here, including a battery. They're actually really nice to use. They've got the usual touch sensitive top and uh, and nudging on the edge. They're fine to use and they're, they're, they're all right in a unit this size. It's got the same high quality backlit controls. It's got the same pads. They are above the jog wheels this time and there's only four of them, but they have a bank button. So you actually do get eight pads and you get all that performance control there. In fact, the only thing missing on those against the very big ones is there's no slicer, which I'm sure most of us aren't that bothered about, right? So it's still got the hot cues, it's still got the loops and the rolls on these buttons. And they're actually very nice. They've got that little strip of colour, which is a bit more understated. It's just what coming through on the Prime gear at the moment. So the pads are all there. You've got your uh, EQs at the top, which look like effects, right? Because they're horizontal. There's clearly nowhere to really squash effects in with this big screen here. But these are the EQs. So you've got your level and your low, your mid and your highs across here. Horizontally, once you get used to those, they're fine. The usual looping, it's got the other buttons, including the, the Denon and DJ pitch bends, which people seem to still love because they still put them on everything they seem to do. Uh, so loading of the tracks is in the middle. Uh, it, it's all there. Uh, there's one effects unit on this here, but there's uh, two, actually two effects available on the sweep. You can have the normal filter and there's also like an echo out uh, effect on the sweep, which is kind of trickled down from the, the high end gear in this range. Um, there is a full booth and master output here including the balance around the back there's an auxiliary in for your backup sources i'm struggling to find stuff that's missing on here apart from the fact that it's all crammed in with just the two channels like on the prime 2 actually and that makes it as i said at the beginning unique so who's going to use this well this is where it gets fun because I can, I want one and I'm not really sure when I'm going to use it. Let me think of a few times in my life if I owned one when I'd use this. I'd have it sat on my lap watching TV when the family are doing something else uh, and I want my headphones on and I want to prepare some tunes. It's got a battery in it. Just sit down in the living room with your family, your headphones on, zoning out, preparing your music. Obviously it's going to be good for preparing music anywhere on the plane or in hotel rooms and so on. Uh, because it's in the same ecosystem, anything you do is an SD card on the front and there's a USB around the back. Anything you do can then just be taken and put into a grown-up Denon system if you like. Mobile DJs are going to like this because it's going to be a great backup system, cocktail hour, the second room in the venue. It's all running on the same ecosystem as their main gear. So these are just two use cases that jump to mind immediately. You know, this whole idea of walking halfway up a mountain with a controller and doing a DJ set, well, this is your controller. It's got battery power in it. Uh, the battery lasts about four hours. We were using it all night last night. <laughs> it was uh, quite an interesting evening with kind of all the DJ press in one place. And the only person sat down was the person sat at the table DJing. Everyone else has kind of stood up. It was amusing, but this thing lasted all night. Uh, so the battery is certainly long enough for a decent length party. I'd say four hours is probably quite conservative. So 
The screen is the same size on the also launched uh, at the same time, Prime 2. Uh, so that means it feels quite big on here. It feels quite small on the Prime 2. It's an optical illusion. Clearly, it's the same size screen. But suddenly, it feels like quite a generous screen on this. It's a 7-inch screen uh, across, a little bit smaller than an iPad mini. So let's talk about, <laughs> you know, your head says, I, when would I use this? Your heart says, I want one. Let's talk about kind of things that make it feel kind of like I want one you know the jogs make it feel really nice it's kind of quite cute the streaming built into it makes it feel nice because battery streaming something on your lap you've got all the world's music and there's no no cables everywhere it's just kind of you and this unit and all the world's music that's pretty cool right um the fact that it's got a lot of the features that are compelling on the bigger stuff like you can touch the artwork and preview your tracks uh, in your headphones before you load them and stuff means that you're getting a combination of stuff which is pretty new and a form factor that's pretty new as well. Both sides of it. Features that are new that would be good on any, on any device, plus this thing that is quite unique. Uh, these are the kind of heart things. These are the things that make you want this. Uh, did, never mind when you're going to find a chance to use it. Um, the, the playing around with it last night did throw up a couple of things that we realised weren't here that are on the bigger units. There's no mic EQ, for instance, which mobile DJs might be like, well, I need, I need my mic EQ. Apparently, that's coming in firmware very soon. So you'll be able to dive into the settings and just set your mic EQ how you want it, which is nice. It's a, an advantage of having this kind of thing where it's a C, um, uh, an operating system in there that you can just upgrade by firmware. You're not stuck with what was in the unit when it appeared. So as you can probably tell, I'm my heart is saying, get one of these, Phil. My head's saying, well, you know, it's, it's $999. It's not a cheap investment, but at the same time, you're getting a lot of the stuff that's in the bigger, most of the stuff that's in the bigger unit and all the important stuff, which makes it great value, but not the cheapest thing on the market. It's small and maybe you wouldn't turn up to a big gig to play with this, but then again, put it in a nice flight case. You're gonna look as professional as anyone and you would turn up to play in a big gig with this. Great second controller, maybe even a great first controller. I think it probably comes from seeing this for the first time just in the last few hours and thinking, I love that, but yeah, but who's it for? And I'd like you to chip in and tell us, would you buy one of these? What would you use it for? Do you think this is an amazing unit? It's certainly a, un a unique unit. Let's kind of have a conversation around this. Uh, it's under a thousand dollars. It's about 899 UK pounds. I think it's about 1099 euros. So yeah, it's, it's cheaper than all the other units in this range and you know for a standalone DJ controller battery powered uh, that doesn't need a DJ system battery powered that doesn't need anything else and that can wi-fi into all the world's music on Tidal and forthcoming on other services as well pretty compelling uh, so what do you think let us know underneath uh, would you go and buy one of these meanwhile get good get out there and make the moments people and look out for our full review of this when we've crystallized our thoughts a bit more and had a really long play with it coming on Digital DJ Tips very soon.